The title of the project is taken from the novel uh, The Left Hand of Darkness, which was written by Ursula K. Le Guin, and this year is actually the 50th year uh, since its publication, so it was published in 1969. Um, and it's set on a, a planet called Gethin, which translates to winter. And uh, the interesting thing that we were thinking about uh, in relation to this project is how the all of the people who inhabit the planet change and shift their gender throughout their lives. And the book um, really had quite a profound impact on an idea of science fiction at the time of its publication, not least because it was written by a woman, but also because of the ways in which it championed quite, uh, championed a feminist way of constructing narrative, but also um, wasn't driven by a kind of masculine heroic storyline and it still remains hugely relevant to the world around us right now in this contemporary moment and poses really serious and and quite challenging questions not only about gender and sexuality but about language and communication and power and empire and the means through which we move through the world, who gets to move through the world, um, what stories get to be told and what are forgotten or overlooked or willfully or violently erased and how we can reframe and renegotiate a lens on the world to try and make space for more stories, um, important stories and narratives and bodies and communities that, that need to be championed and need to be made more visible. There's also a focus upon the environment and the landscape um, of that particular planet and it feels very relevant now when we're in a time of crisis with lots of different ecological issues as well. So this is a very multifaceted project and we've invited many different voices from many different places to be part of it and they take the form of or at least the work takes the form of painting, uh, we have sculptural objects, we have installation and film. Um, and we also wanted to bring in performance and poetry and... And writing And as writing well. as well, of course. We couldn't have a project like this without um, new writing. In the way that we started conversations with artists, um, it wasn't necessarily a case of everyone in the project being a massive Le Guin fan. Um, some artists were and are, some artists may be bigger fans than we are in some respects, <laughs> um, but other people involved in the project didn't know of the book or just were sort of loosely aware of Le Guin as, as a figure or as a literary name. And so some conversations started simply by Kim and I posting copies of the book to artists that we were interested in, uh, artists who we thought might resonate um, in particular ways with our research and our understanding of the potential for a project inspired by Le Guin and inspired by this book in particular. Um, and one artist that, that fits that, that kind of conversation uh, is a French artist called Flora Moscovici. And we were thinking about Flora's practice and really wanting to work with Flora as a as a painter in the most expanded uh, definition of that term, she creates these really vast environments using paint directly onto the walls of galleries or any given architectural interior um, that, that, that shift and change the atmosphere and the environment around you. It feels like you're stepping into a world or into a painting as opposed to just looking at an object flat on the wall. After reading the book, she started talking to us about trying to articulate an idea of warmth or heat in the snow, not necessarily just looking at ice and snow in winter, but trying to imagine a burst of energy in that landscape, um, which comes across really, really vividly mm. um, in the work that, that she has produced. So as soon as you walk into the gallery spaces, that lovely bright space in Gallery 1 um, is filled with the work of an artist called Tuesday Smiley. 
Um, Tuesday is based in New York and over the past kind of couple of years has really been analysing very closely and dissecting a lot of the writing of Ursula Le Guin. The, the work that you'll see in Gallery One as soon as you walk in are these kind of sublime framed watercolour paintings of, of lots of the different um, editions and covers of The Left Hand of Darkness. Um, so from many different countries, many different places, obviously there were many different editions and she has kind of meticulously painted these gorgeous, um, really bright, quite small um, paintings of them. And then she has also made a takeaway piece, which is, um, it's very similar to a leaf uh, from the book that has kind of been ripped out and it's uh, a particular piece of text which is very important to her which talks about um, these two companions that are on a journey crossing over some of the landscape and some of the ice in a really important part of the book. So this kind of analytical study that Tuesday is making in painting and drawing and in her wider research is undertaken from a contemporary trans feminist perspective looking at the ways that gender is troubled um, or explored or exploded in some ways um, through Le Guin's writing uh, and how different artists have similarly tried to push um, radical conceptions of gender since. Another artist um, close by in the galleries is the Mexican artist Manuel Solano and Manuel's beautiful paintings also, in a different way, push at our uh, normative understandings of gender. So in 2013, uh, Manuel's practice underwent radical shifts in, in, in many respects due to um, them losing their eyesight and going blind through complications because of a HIV-related infection. And that uh, moment in their life kind of intersected with them starting to question their own gender and question society's construction of gender. And since then, they've pr been producing these paintings and this body of work, um, looking at new ways to think about gender and to think about a construction of self, to think about self-portraiture and how that's informed by memory and what you can recall visually and how that can be put onto a canvas. Um, if Even if, for example, you can't really see the canvas you're working on anymore and how these binary constructions of male and female at this point uh, need to be revised, need to be expanded, need to be um, joyfully explored and that can be done through painting um, and art making as much as it can through writing, through theory, through dialogue in different ways. And uh, then also kind of connected with memory and um, using that to kind of present something on a canvas. Um, we're really lucky to have uh, some drawings by an artist called Abel Rodriguez. Um, so Abel Rodriguez is an elder who's part of a Colombian tribe um, who, and the tribe once inhabited a very specific part of the Colombian Amazon and have since been displaced. And Abel, now relocated to Bogota, um, has produced these really beautiful drawings from memory of the indigenous flora and fauna in that particular part of the Colombian Amazon. And those drawings that you will see are also layered on top of some of the walls that Flora has um, like directly painted upon. And close, close by to Abel's work um, and thinking about uh, remarkable flora and fauna in, in, in different ways, we are showing a selection of specimens from the University of Dundee's zoological collection, um, which was cultivated and crafted by the biologist and mathematician Darcy Thompson um, over a century ago. So from this collection, we were delighted to be able to select um, specimens of different kinds of animals. 
um, who exhibit remarkable tendencies when it comes to ideas of reproduction, of sexuality, um, of kind of what we would understand in a, in a human context as really radical ways of bonding, of reproducing, of building family and mm. and kinship and, and connection, um, showing off incredibly complex sex lives, incredibly complex uh, reproductive systems that shift and morph and uh, are much more interesting um, than the human race and in many respects um, are perhaps the closest that we would understand as alien species here here on, on Earth. Some of the, the people that we have included in the project are um, really fascinated by and influenced by the different ways in which Ursula Le Guin constructs these world spaces and these imagined places where um, people support one another and live with one another and alongside one another. And uh, we are showing a, a video piece by artists called Sofia Almeria and Victoria Sin. And they're really focusing upon the kind of speculative fiction elements of the actual writing of Ursula Le Guin. And in their video piece, they have, uh, they're creating a kind of feminist world in which we have broken down all of the boundaries and the, the construction of the world that we currently live in. Uh, they've broken it down and, and they're projecting how we might build that back up into uh, an imagined future, this kind of wonderful future. And they describe it as, um, unlearning what we know and then remaking a world in symbiosis, which is picking up on lots of what Le Guin kind of writes about and talks about in her work. Another film piece uh, or video installation in the show is by uh, an artist from Singapore called Ming Wong. And Ming, Ming is known for taking cinematic ideas and scenes that we might be familiar with from Hollywood cinema across the 20th century um, and shaking them around to ask us to think about the ways in which they have been constructed and ask us to think about who has constructed them and how they often um, are very problematic in their depictions of gender or of race in particular. And the piece that we are showing is a work called Bloody Marys, which steps off from the Rogers and Hammerstein musical South Pacific and focuses in on that film's uh, terrible, really um, racist undertones and underpinnings uh, in its depiction of indigenous peoples in Polynesia and in different Pacific islands. So this work is a really good example of Ming's practice of retelling and reimagining what we understand as world culture and what we understand as storytelling um, when we don't um, simply believe the stories that have been told by privileged white men in Hollywood in the 50s, <laughs> for example. And another artist who's really thinking about and presenting those kind of overlooked cultural narratives or dominant cultural narratives um, is an Irish artist called Emma Wolfe Hall. And she is really interested in presenting a perspective which is very much from like a working class, queer, feminist uh, perspective. And she, in a lot of her research and a lot of her work, is uh, thinking about what is missing from, the, from history and what is the, the dominant, uh, those dominant narratives. So this is a new piece of work that Emma has produced for the show. And there's a real focus upon the kind of history, the overlooked history and legacy of Irish modernist architect Eileen Gray. And Emma has kind of remade um, the, the shape and the architecture of these screens with um, references to the kind of queer aspects and the queer elements of her life that are not really represented in the legacy and history as we know it. 
So thinking about landscapes closer to home and here in Scotland, we've been working with uh, the Glasgow-based artist Andrew Black to commission a new film as part of the show. And what Andrew's wanting to put forward in this work is a kind of queer fantasy of the Isle of Skye that counters the really deeply commercialised and tourist-driven representations of that landscape that has been pushed out by broadcast media and the tourist industry over the past couple of years, which actually results in real problems for communities and people trying to live and work on that land. So another artist who's really focusing on um, power structures and the relationship to place is Emma Wulukai Wanambwa. And she is kind of excavating the, the colonial history of East Africa and its relationship to Europe, um, culturally, politically, and also the kind of aesthetic engagement with Europe. Um, the representations that we see of many different countries in East Africa, um, this kind of exotic landscape that's presented, which is a very kind of Western presentation of those particular places. Um, and the film itself is is a kind of mediation. It's like an, es an essay, um, which uh, is really looking at the different power structures and um, the, the different coercive powers between that particular region and Europe. And there are even parts of that film where there are, um, it's looking at the entire landscape and there's also different conversations she has with family members there, um, like focusing on the history of that place. So in thinking about blurring the boundaries between earthly and alien landscapes, we're also presenting a film installation by Isaac Julian. And Isaac in this work is really inspired by a peer of Le Guin, uh, Octavia Butler, who is another remarkable feminist sci-fi writer, um, honing in her practice and crafting worlds um, across the second half of the 20th century at the same time as Le Guin. Um, but Butler is really particularly known for her interrogation of race as well as gender and hybrid forms between human and machine um, or human and non-human species. And in Isaac's film, he takes, he almost isolates this character from a, from a butler narrative, who's this uh, black alien cyborg figure moving through a wintry um, glacial landscape filmed on location in Iceland and distorted in different ways um, so as to complicate your understanding of what's happening in the scene and almost frozen in time as well where it's a very short work only a few minutes long um, where you almost feel like you're getting a glimpse of this character's journey that then loops and folds back in on itself as she moves through these icy wintry glitchy landscapes. So with this project having so many differing and various elements, we really, uh, we thought it was really important to include new writing, uh, new forms of writing as part of the project. And we were really thinking about um, uh, prose and poetry and different ways in which you can tell stories. And so we have for this project produced three new chapbooks. Um, so we invited the writer Hugh Lemmy to produce something and he has made um, a new piece of prose which is kind of really focusing upon the folk elements and the folk stories that are within the left hand of darkness. Uh, we invited the writer and poet C.A. Conrad to make a contribution and they have produced uh, new poetry and new prose which is really focusing upon um, the ways in which we as a species are destroying this world that we live in and the war that is being raged on the, the war that is being waged on um, 
different and other bodies in this world that we are inhabiting also. So Tuesday Smiley is the third publication that we've produced and this is an essay really um, mediating upon Ursula Le Guin's writing and uh, looking at the left hand of darkness but from a, tran a contemporary trans feminist perspective and she also within this essay really focuses upon Ursula Le Guin's approach to um, revising and editing her ideas over time and an essay that was published by Le Guin in the 70s and then was kind of rewritten with footnotes uh, looking at uh, updating her kind of perspective on gender and how that appears within the left hand of darkness. At the back of Gallery 2 we've created a space um, to present the work of Harry Josephine Giles and Harry Josephine as part of the project has created a queer zine that we are circulating throughout the run of the exhibition and within the zine is a is a remarkable essay called Wages for Transition that presents a political position on gender right now um, that is hugely important for all of us to think on and talk about um, in, uh, in thinking about how we champion and protect and uh, create safe space for um, trans and non-binary people to move through the world. Over the course of the exhibition, audiences are welcome to take a copy of this scene with them in exchange for a donation, whatever they feel able to give. And then all proceeds, all donations that we gather over the course of the show will be donated to the Trans Health Solidarity Fund here in Scotland um, to, to help their work, in uh, their brilliant work in advocating for uh, trans and non-binary people here in this country. And so an important aspect of the programme is our uh, series of events that we'll have in the galleries between December through to March. We'll have things such as reading groups, uh, screenings, performances, um, poetry readings, uh, different tours that various people are going to lead um, with people such as Nat Raha, Sarah Shin, Nisha Ramaya, Skara Wood. So in the broadest sense, seized by the left hand, what we're trying to do is champion artists and writers um, who, much like Le Guin was throughout her life, are engaged in different acts of radical imagination and radical imagining, trying to craft and create worlds and other spaces that hint at ways in which we might better live, love and care for one another.